Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brendan Bias from ChickenCheck.com and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a frosted glassy texture for 3D objects in Photoshop CC or CS6 Extended. And so, I'm sorry to say this means that if you're using a standard edition of Photoshop CS6 or if you're using CS5 or CS4, so on and so forth, you will not be able to achieve this effect. So sorry about that, but that's how it goes. And also, just a bit of a forewarning for those of you that don't have the strongest computers out there, but still try to do these 3D-oriented pro. Uh, sorry, these 3D-oriented tutorials. Um, this particular texture takes a very long time to render properly. So be prepared to either sit there for a while while it renders, or just kind of leave your computer there for an hour or two and go watch a movie or something. You'll, you'll see what I mean later on in the tutorial. But anyway guys, uh, for those of you that are ready to get going, let's make our new uh, object, or not our object, but our new document here. And I'm going to choose a width and height of 1920 by 1080 with a white background and we'll click OK. And let's double click our background and rename that as BG. And what I want to do here is uh, set up the background so that it's not quite so bright and overwhelming here. So let's change our foreground color to a sort of off-white color. It doesn't exactly matter what it is, so just click OK. And let's fill this layer in with our foreground color by hitting Alt Backspace. And that would be Option Delete if you're on a Mac. Now I do want to add a very slight bit of a... Uh, kind of like a vignette around the edge of our background here. So to do that, I'll go to the effects, apply a gradient overlay. I'm going to turn on uh, the blend mode of multiply. And let's do an opacity of say 20%. And let's toggle the reverse, set the style to radial, change the angle to 60 degrees, and amp up the scale to 150%. And with that, we can click OK. Now, as some of you may already know, I really don't like the banding that I see going on when I apply these uh, gradient overlays and such, so I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out. Now, to do that, we can right-click where it says Gradient Overlay in the effects for our background layer, and we can choose Create Layer, and that will create a new layer for that BG gradient fill. Now, with that layer selected, let's go to Filter, Noise, and add some noise. And for this, you can choose uh, whatever percentage you want. I find that around uh, 2 or 3% is a good amount for me. And the distribution is set to Gaussian with monochromatic check marked, and I'll just hit OK. So now that we've got this all figured out and ready to go, let's create our 3D object. Now, if you guys don't have a logo or anything of the sort, I would simply recommend creating some text. Now, I actually have a logo, so I'm just going to create a new layer. And let's reset our foreground and background color by hitting the letter D on our keyboard. And we'll swap around the foreground and background color by hitting X as well. And so that way we have our foreground color as white and our background color as black. This is actually going to be kind of important for later, guys. So let's uh, open up my brush here and let's right click and I do not have the right brush so let me really quick uh, reset it and I need to open up my brush and there we go. So let's just uh, scale this down until it fits and let's click somewhere in the middle. Oh, I forgot that my brush opacity is down. Let's make sure that's all the way up. My bad. <laughs> Okay, so once you've got your text or logo or whatever on your document, uh, you can choose to center it on the canvas or not. Uh, it's not overly important, so just kind of do whatever the heck you want on that front. And what do you say we extrude this sucker? So let's go to 3D, choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. And if you want to, you can switch over to the 3D workspace. And just so you guys can uh, kind of follow along better, uh, let's go ahead and just choose Yes. And if for some reason you get the 3D extrusion but you don't see anything in the 3D panel, do not worry, simply switch over to your layers panel and back to the 3D panel and everything should load up for you. Alrighty then. So let's select the entire layer one object 
and let's change the extrusion depth down to something more close to, let's try somewhere around 100. And after that, let's go to our cap, which is the third option inside of our properties panel. And let's set the width to 5% and change the sides from front to front and back. So that way we have a very slight bevel on both the front and the back of our object. Now let's go ahead and make this the glassy texture. So let's select the layer one front inflation material and then shift click do the layer one back inflation material and all five materials should now be selected. And from here on it's actually pretty simple what we're gonna do. Let's change the shine to somewhere around 60 or 63%. We'll change the reflection to about 15%. Let's do a roughness of about 3% with a bump of 2%. We'll turn down the opacity to 10%, and then we'll simply put up the refraction to 1.5 or maybe even a little bit higher than that, depending on your tastes. So now we should have a slightly glassy style for our object. And now what I want to do is kind of set it up a little bit better in the 3D plane. So let's select the entire layer one object. And I'm going to rotate this around the X axis. And to do that, you simply hover your mouse right below this little blue uh, front pointing arrow until you see a up and down yellow line. So simply click and drag this upwards until you have an X axis of roughly 90 degrees. It doesn't have to be spot on perfect and I'll move this down on the Z axis ever so slightly. Alrighty then, so now what do you say we select our current view, which is simply the camera for our 3D scene here, and with your move tool selected and uh, you have your 3D modes up top, select the first icon and click and drag around to kind of rotate around the canvas. So I'll go somewhere around here Use the, uh, the pan option to pan around up and down to the side. And then let's also dolly forward just a little bit with that fourth option. And let's just get a angle that looks kind of cool. And it should give us a good idea of how our texture looks. I think we're in a pretty good spot. And all I really want to do now is select the infinite light that we have here. And once again with the 3D... What is the name of this tool anyway? Rotate the 3D object selected. Uh, let's click and drag this until, okay, so it's not letting me click and drag. Let's click off of it and go back and maybe it'll, there we go. Uh, let's just rotate this until it's slightly up and to the right. So somewhere around here should be pretty decent. And let's bump up the shadow softness to say 5%. And if you guys don't really want uh, super dark shadows when you render, something that you can do is go to the environment for the 3D scene here and simply turn down the sh opacity for the, uh, the shadows on the ground plane. So I'll just leave that at about, say, 25%. Okay, so now that we've got this all set up, let's create the frosty look for the, uh, the front inflation material and the back inflation material. So to do that, uh, let's select the front inflation and back inflation materials. And to do that, I simply clicked one and control clicked the other so they were both selected. And we're going to go to this little folder icon where it's, uh, where it's next to the bump. And for this, we're going to choose new texture. And, you know, just keep the same resolution as you initially created. So in my case, it would be 1920 by 1080 and we'll click OK twice to create a new bump for each of those. So let's start off with our front inflation and go back to that new icon. It should be changed a little bit and we can edit that texture that we just created. And you'll kind of see a little bit of an outline of uh, the object that we have in our scene here. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's go to our layers panel off to the right hand side. Let's double click the backgrounds and simply click OK. And let's go to Filter, and choose Render, and choose Clouds. And from here on, you can go to Filter, Distort, and choose Glass. But uh, if you guys don't see this option, simply go to your Filter Gallery, and in the Distort option, you should see Glass. 
And from here on out, the, uh, the options are pretty straightforward. Increase your distortion all the way up to 20, set your smoothness to 2, and your scaling to 200%, and click OK. And now we have this cool little glassy texture for Layer 1's front inflation material. And now with this, uh, we'll go to File, choose Save, click OK, and close out of this document. And now we need to go back to the 3D panel, choose the back inflation material, and do the same thing. Let's open up the bump texture and edit that, and rinse and repeat. So let's double click, click OK, filter, uh, sorry, render clouds. Oops, chose different clouds, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we'll go to distort, choose glass, and the options are still there, so we'll click OK. We'll save that, click OK close out of it and now all that should be left to do is render it except my uh, my scene is being a little a little strange here I wonder if I should just uh, click off of it go back and I have no idea what's going on so let's just try and click render and see what happens all right, great. It looks like it is uh, successfully rendering out our uh, our glass logo here, and you're starting to see uh, what looks like the, the frosty texture here. But like I said, guys, this particular render takes a long time to do, so rather than uh, wait around here for a couple hours while this renders out, I'm going to uh, interrupt this render by hitting the escape key on my keyboard. And uh, I just realized that I know why my 3D scene was looking a little bit weird. I have the light selected, so I simply need to select the uh, whatever this left hand most option is to show all of the objects in here. And let's go to our layers, uh, click off of our 3D object, and you guys can see exactly. Uh, let's just go back to my other one. You can <laughs> you can get a better idea of how this will turn out after a couple hours of of rendering or whatever, but. Anyway guys, that is the uh, the general idea of how it is that you would go about creating a frosted glass texture for your 3D objects in Photoshop CC or CS6 Extended. And I admit guys, it's not really the greatest way to go about, you know, creating an effect like this since Photoshop really is not meant to be a 3D engine. But you know what? Uh, some of you guys really wanted to know how to, to create this effect. So I decided, what the heck, I'll show you guys, you know, regardless of <laughs> how useless this might be. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the tutorial, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment or any combination of the two. And that's all I have for you guys for this week. I will see you next time. <laughs>